my god. Oh, I'm not ready for this. I'm really not. This is real. This is real it's, trepidation it's in my voice. Um, yeah. it, this is it, gang. Um, welcome to the franchise. I'm your host. With the least. I have the least. The least of all the hosts. Daniel Ehrenberg. No. Uh, you know, the D train. I'm, I'm the D pain today. The D rain in my heart. The D stain. A stain upon this show. The D. Um, I'm off. I'm out of it. All right. Listen, we're yeah. doing. This is our last episode with Henry. All right. Henry Papali is my co host. I want to say that right up front. Henry Papali will always be my co-host, co-creator, all right? Here he is in New Jersey covering at least one New Jersey-based franchise. Um, <laughs> and uh, and this, is, this is his final episode as host. Henry, introduce yourself for the last time. Hey, everybody. Henry over here, H Dog to y'all. This is indeed my final uh, episode as co-host of the franchise. Uh, it's bittersweet. Um, I, I wanted to thank. I heard from a good deal of people uh, in my email, wishing me well and wishing the show well. Do you and, want uh, on your final episode? Maybe it's time for your definitive top five listeners of the franchise. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy oh i can't go out like that i mean honestly they know who they are so oh, all right all right you can play the diplomat like i do i thought maybe it's your know. last show you want to go out in a blaze of glory like john oh, bon Jovi. My, my blaze of glory is to continue the tradition of the show which is they know who they are i, I would never want to reveal a magician does not reveal his secrets yeah, so, and they probably do know who they are. They, I, I, you know, they could, they might. I, I, I don't know. But right. uh, here's where we're at. We're covering three. Tw we're still on twenty twenty one franchise wrap up, and frankly, it's gonna keep going into the new host. All right. So today, you're doing, yeah, you're gonna continue the the cleanup. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. We're doing two more episodes of cleanup. All right? I added okay. one because he's okay. seen stuff that you haven't. Um, All right. So Henry and I will be covering today three of the finest franchises there are. Okay? The new installments of three of our favorite franchises. Then we've got our new host coming in next week, and we're going to do... Uh, two movies that are currently in theaters that I'll announce at the end of the show that are big hits, and then we'll, we're the, another week of two shitty things that you guys aren't going to care about, and then it's back to business as usual. Okay, covering Kyle's weird picks, and uh, you know maybe he'll pick something. This this guy. All right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Should I say who the host is? No, I'll do it at the end. Why? No, no, no like I'll do it next week. Maybe he'll just he'll just pop up. Just gonna have him pop on. Maybe. All right. Hey, your call, buddy. Should I set your it up? Call. No, I'm gonna have him pop on. I like that idea. Okay. But I'll say what well, movies I mean, we're covering. That might be kind of cool. That might be kind of cool. Like yeah. a reveal, like in the moment. Yeah. Yeah. I'll say this, like, and this will probably reveal it to a lot of people. Listeners of the Patreon may be very familiar with this person. Listeners of the main show will not. This is not a person that's ever been on the main show. That's true. Yeah. That's really true. But now he's going to be on every episode of the main show. So I hope it goes well. I, I hope so, too. I'm sure it will. Yeah. I'm sure it will. Okay. So, but Henry, we... <laughs> We've got to reckon with Fast and the Furious, all right? We've got to reckon with Halloween, all right? And we've got to yeah, reckon... Kids. Well, I'm just saying the franchise. 
Yeah. And uh, Chucky, the Child's Play franchise. All right. We have covered all three of these franchises in their entireties. And now new installments have been uh, thrust upon us. They have indeed. Um, These are uh, three interesting ones. I I, I was thinking about it, how, uh, you know, Halloween was, I I, I think, was uh, our second year of doing Halloween uh, in October, our Shocktober of the second year of recording. Our first was Friday the 13th. Yeah, that's right. I think we did the Halloween second year. And, you know, we both had varying opinions on it, but, you know, we both love, obviously, the first one's a masterpiece, and we both really, really liked the David Gordon Green uh, remake. Uh, Fast and the Furious. All the one Curtis of- ones are good, man. Hospital one is good. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, Kevin Williamson one is good, um, and the third one is good. With, with she's not really in that one, but the the weird one that Michael Myers isn't in. Season of the Witch. <laughs> yeah, right. Huh? Well, right. But where I was going with it was, it covers sort of three branches of thought here. Like Halloween was something, at least for me, I figured going in, I I knew what I was kind of getting myself into. Fast and the Furious was something that I really wasn't looking forward to covering. And then we discovered uh, that I did like uh, a few, quite a few in- installments. I would argue it's the best franchise in the world right now. I would, would you know, Curtis courteously disagree. Um, What's better? What is handling their action better than Fast and the Furious? They've made nine movies, spin off, and they're only getting better. Mm. There's going to there's going to be some disagreement today, uh, which is par for the course and totally fine, of course. Uh, but anyway, and then I was going to say Child's Play, which I remember uh, revisiting when we covered it. I don't even remember when we covered it, but uh, and still I think like, it might have been the fourth Halloween. I didn't think we did that for a Halloween thing. Oh, maybe. You, oh, no, no, no. We did it. Logan. Um. A great listener of the show, Logan Biader, uh, he, he commissioned it. He commissioned it when that new. Remember when the remake came out? Oh yeah, yeah, I yeah. The yeah. Story of how I had to drive to the middle of nowhere and on an oasis to find it to see it. Yeah, sure. So and that it was very uneven, but amusing and fun to cover. And and what quite happy. Well, you were just breaking up for a second because it's an episode of the franchise. Henry. Say that again? I don't fucking care. Just keep talking. Okay. (laughs) I was just trying to say that the the original wasn't, uh, didn't live up quite to what I had remembered it being as a kid, but I still liked it a lot. So anyway. Yeah. um, I I just love doing the show. I'm glad it's going to keep going. Um, So, Henry... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Maybe some of the tech tips will be different. I don't know, man. Maybe. I guess, I guess we'll find out. I don't think the tech tips will be different until I am rich. Until I have like a good laptop. And I really think that the Wi-Fi companies give good Wi-Fi to rich people. I really do. I've never I, had good Wi-Fi in my life. Why is yeah. that? I pay the yeah. most amount of money possible for Wi-Fi. Yeah. I think you have a point. You don't he- you don't ever hear like a rich person complaining about Did Gal oh. Gadot have trouble getting that Imagine video up because of the Wi Fi? I don't think so. <laughs> Be great if she did though. No, that was handled effortlessly and easily. I don't know. <laughs> or maybe you just don't hear about it because their assistants do everything. Alright. Um so Speaking of a franchise that Gal Gadot was once in, and we get a glimpse of her in flashback in um, yes. in the new one. Uh, should we start there? Sure. All right. The Fast Saga, Henry. F9. You'll recall these were movies we never gave a shit about. They were just like little racing movies. Then all of a sudden, fourth one. They bring back the original cast. 
fifth one, they decide they're going to make a fucking masterpiece, all right? That's when they really get their shit together. Five, six, seven. That's three in a row that are all-time motherfucking classics, all right? The quality drops a little bit with eight, with F. Gary Gray sort of out of his element, and Hobbs and Shaw, which has its moments but is fairly throwaway, all right? Which we saw in theaters. Which we did see in theaters. And now we're back. I saw this in theaters. Uh, to the original... This is the original numbering. All right? And mm. this is the ninth installment of the franchise proper. All right? Yes. We have shed uh, Paul Walker by um, having him leave this mortal coil on, on Earth. and You know... Yeah, but uh, he's still still he's alive still... in the universe of the movie. Oh my god, it's so weird. It's yeah. great. I love it. And <laughs> then we no no rock this time because he was off doing the spin-off and he hates Vin Diesel and no uh no Statham until the Stinger. All right? So, it's a little bit of a gutted cast, but we've still got the D's. We've got Michelle Rodriguez, we've got Tyrese We've got Luda, and we're bringing back some old favorites from earlier entries in the French. Yes. All right. Yeah. I didn't remember that Vin Rock clash. Are you crazy? Don't you remember that they had to be the same height in the movies, even though The Rock is like a foot taller than Vin Diesel? I, I, and, <laughs> and they also, each of them had to land the same amount of punches on each other in all the previous movies. I don't remember that. Yeah, oh, yeah. my they God. They really don't like each other. Um, Vin is a very tiny man. He is. <laughs> Both in stature and in... in, uh, in Talent? Uh, well, yeah. And in, in, uh, in uh, you know... Character. That's the word I was looking for. I don't have any, so it's a tough word for me sometimes. <laughs> he also looks uh, oddly like a CGI creation in this movie. I, I don't know. He's had some work done, huh? I feel like that that face is sanded out at this point. It is bizarre. He yeah. looks like he doesn't have any pores anymore. No, he looks like a chiseled Rushmore sculpture or something. It's very. He's strange. not chiseled though. He's fat. I could tell he's fat. Like Vin Diesel is so the type of guy to get ab implants you ever see those you ever see the six-pack implants i, I think probably uh, michael buffer's son has them i don't know who that is you know michael buffer let's get ready to rumble oh well his son has the same job as his dad because that's how things work in this world and right. uh and he if you look at pictures of him shirtless which i have um <laughs> he has uh you know ab implants that's great yeah. That's disgusting. It's really gross. So he's like so, this chubby dude, but he's all cut up on the abs. Oh, God. Yeah. He gets hot oh, babes, bro. All right. Jesus. So F9, <laughs> it came out June 25th, 2021. The theaters had just opened in, uh, in New York here in like April, I think. And so I was excited F9, it was supposed to come out the year earlier. Like, it was supposed to come out like May 2020. So it was like early days of COVID, Henry. And yeah, I remember yeah. this was the first thing that got postponed after COVID that I was like, that's fucking bullshit. Really? Yeah. Because I was, at this point, I was like, release it to us at home. Sure, like, of course. Be a decent yeah. person, but there's no decent person in the world, which we learned during no. COVID. Right. And which is why Halloween Kills, I, I believe, is the most realistic Halloween movie. <laughs> that is a very interesting take. Thank you. Yeah. 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 A lot of mobs. There sure are. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of torch wielders in that film. A lot of torch wielders. All right. So the big news here for me was Justin Lin has returned to direct. The great Justin Lin, uh, who uh, directed Fast's four, sorry, three through six, all right? Okay. Which includes two of the very best, right. all right? 
And uh, in recent years, he sort of had projects come and go that didn't really take off. His last movie that came out before this was Star Trek Beyond. Can you believe that? He was like attached to like a million things that just never got made. And now he was just like, fuck it, I'll do another Fast and Furious movie. That was the third one, right? Yeah. I think I like that. It's a good movie, yeah. Yeah. It was an improvement over Into Darkness, even though I like that too, but... Uh... Yeah, like like yeah, the right. Fast and the Furious movies, it's one of those movies where it's like we have a big cast and we're going to split them all up into groups of twos or threes and see what happens. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. All right, so, so he's, he's back yeah. to direct. But the big disappointment for me mm. is where, where, oh, where, Henry, art thou Chris Morgan? Chris Morgan. Yeah, Chris better. Morgan, if I may There's refresh 25. if I may refresh your memory, was the Please. savior of the Fast and the Furious franchise. Alright? He joins up in Tokyo Drift to write that movie for Justin Lin, and then he wrote every Fast and Furious movie after that. Three through eight, plus Hobbs and Shaw. This guy is the steward of this franchise. And I mm. feel that he is missed. In this film, I think the plotting all works out all right. It feels like a Fast and Furious movie to me. But the dialogue, I feel like the characters aren't talking right. Yeah, there's, uh, there's a lot for me uh, that, that wasn't clicking. Um, that's one of the things for sure. Um, and uh, you're right about the dialogue. It's, it's clunkier. Mm-hmm. Um, some of the characters seem to be not saying things that they I would expect them to say, but uh, uh, yeah, so that's that's and felt. some characters he doesn't know what to do with. I feel like Chris yeah. Morgan has the ability to take a large cast and give enough of a moment to everybody in the cast where like you walk away from the movie feeling like they were a worthwhile character to have in the movie. Whereas this one, there's some characters you're like. He, this guy doesn't know how to use Ramsey. Get out of here. <laughs> that's uh, that's very funny you said her because that that's who I was thinking of. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, a, yeah. she's just there. Well, she's, she's like a. You're you're asking like me a, to believe that this like beautiful computer genius is now going to spend all of her time hanging out with Ludacris and and uh, fucking Tyrese. Get out of here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She she was like this beautiful ornament that was just over in the corner that they tried to, you know, make silly lines for and stuff. A car ornament, yeah. like the dice in the windshield, right? That's that's right. That's the car ornament, or the the little the little hula girl on the uh, on the dashboard. Yeah. So this fella Daniel Casey, he's our new writer. I don't know much about him. Previously, he had written a thing called Kin. That was like a horror thing. I've heard of that. Did I've you heard watch of that. it? Dennis Quaid nope. and James Franco nope. and Carrie Coon. Should I have watched well, this? Carrie Coon. Yeah, I love That's Carrie the Coon. Only name. Yeah, I love her too. That's the only name that made me think it might be good, but I don't know. Oh, oh, woke Henry. You're done with James Franco now. You can't. He, oh, he's no, never I made just... anything good. No, but Carrie Coon is a selective person. I feel she's selective. Well, the world is selective of James Franco now. He's not That's selective. Right. He'd like to be in projects. I feel like the world does not want him to be in projects. <laughs> I think you're right. Yeah. Um, okay. So this film, and I don't use that word loosely, it's a film. It, it came out <laughs> June 25th, 2021 on a budget of $225 million. Uh, this is, was not a streamer. They asked you to go see this baby in theaters, and people turned out in droves. Uh, even in June, right in the heart of the, of the uh, pandemic, $726.2 million at the big box office. Number five for the year overall, right there between two Marvel movies, Black Widow and uh, Eternals, which I just watched and is appalling the worst marvel movie by a mile the first marvel disaster it's it had to happen eventually and it has happened i i okay i haven't watched it dude and i really wanted to know what you were gonna say about it i gotta tell you what's weird about it is uh 
people of all cinematic kinds, you know, knowledgeable people, unknowledgeable people, Marvel nerds, non-Marvel nerds, they all hate it. Yeah, because it's made so for nobody. I didn't know what it's to make of it. It's made for nobody. Smart people are going to watch it and be like, oh, this is very stupid. And stupid people are going to be like, why is this like two hours and 40 minutes and seems to think it's an art film? And and like Marvel nerds, there's nothing in there for them. Like they talk about the Avengers once at dinner and it seems so cursory. And like the, it, it turns into a bunch oh, of wait. CGI. There's no good actors in it. It's a piece of shit. I... I may pass. <laughs> no, you just got to see it. A, you you got to see it. I guess. So. I mean, I haven't missed any of them. Yeah, so I, I know. Guess. Why miss one now? Yeah. That's Chloe Zhao, isn't it? Yep. Of Nomadland. Yeah. yeah. Well, I wasn't a big fan of that movie, so. Hey, Cl- yeah. hey, hey, Emperor Chloe. Um, I just want to comment uh, your, your new clothes. I am not a fan. All right, um, F- F9, uh, well, I like to call it fine, but I think it's a little better than that. Ooh, um, that's a, that works. Thanks. Um, it, it's been nominated for some awards, Henry, so I thought maybe you could bust out, for the last time, one of your themes. Oh, shit. I wasn't prepared for that, and that's also in keeping with tradition. Yeah, it is. You've never once been prepared for it in no. 300 episodes or whatever. Yeah, and when I try to be prepared for it, it's not the right time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it generally works out. Uh, what awards was it nominated for, sir? Only one award voting body nominated it. They are also the only award voting body that nominated Halloween Kills so far. Um, do you want to guess what award voting body that is? I'm going to guess it's the Saturn Awards. No, the Saturn noms, I don't believe, have been announced yet for the oh. 2021 campaign. Oh, you yeah. fooled me. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's People's Choice. That's right. He nailed it. It's the People's Choice Awards. Oh, that was just a guess, man. I, I honestly thought that would be wrong. I thought it might be like the teens or some shit. No, the people have something to say about F9. All right. Let's hear it. The people make the choice. It's up to the people. Choose as they see fit. Fit, fit. Choosing the People's Choice Awards. It's the Choice, Choice, Choice Awards to the people. Yep. Uh, so, lots of noms, Henry. Best movie of 2021. Wow. All right. Wow. Yeah, Black Widow won that one. Okay. All right. Best action movie. You would have, you would think Black Widow would win that because it won Best Movie overall and it's an action movie, but you'd be wrong. Uh, the winner was Shang Chi and the Legend of the Ten R- Rings. Is that what it's called? I think you're right, and that's the correct choice. Okay. Yeah. Um, Vin Diesel and <laughs> Jonathan Cena were both nominated for the Male Movie Star of the Year, and. They both lost, Henry, and I, I've got to say, this must have been genuinely painful for both of these men. They lost to Dwayne The Rock Johnson for Jungle Cruise. Ooh. Ooh. I mean, that is just the people of this nation punching wow. those two huge men in their balls. Yeah. I mean, one huge wow. man, one very tiny man. <laughs> I noticed there's. Now you bring it up now. I've it reminded me that I noticed their size difference, Sena and him, when they're like standing across from each other. I'm like, holy shit, this isn't even close. Yeah, man. but you won't notice that size difference face to face, baby, because they're the same height in this movie. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because yeah, they're yeah. brothers. They're brothers, Henry. They mm. come from the same genetic pool of Toretto's. Same family. The same family, you know? And <sighs> what? What? What are you going to say about the family? Nothing. Listen, you know what, Henry? You don't... <laughs> you... you get a family thrust upon you at birth, but you have to choose your family in this life, Henry. And <laughs> I feel in many ways that the franchise family is 
like the family from the Fast and the Furious, all right? <laughs> like the Toretto's? But they're not just the Toretto's. If it was the Toretto's, there'd be a lot of conflict. You know, they have a gambling addict father, potentially. Right. They've got, right, right. Uh, you know, John Cena, who ran away from home to become a super spy. And yes. <laughs> I say these like they're jokes, but these are actual plot points in the movies. And, you know, and Dom, who, you know, once stole DVDs and now works for the CIA. All right. Yeah. So, Henry, that's the Toretto's. But to me, Dom created a family, a real family. Yeah. All right. Oh, he, did. He, he did. He didn't have the tight knit family that that he wanted from his his initial run with the Toretto's. So he needs Letty, all right? He needs yeah. Brian. He needs Tej. He needs Roman. He needs Hobbs. He needs Shaw. He needs Han. <laughs> he needs yeah. other Shaw. He needs, he needs, <laughs> he needs, he needs. Ramsey, yeah, uh... Ramsey. He needs those two guys. You know those two guys that are sometimes working on this stuff for them. You know those two guys, right. they don't really speak English? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you're not wrong. Uh, I just uh, I, I felt like uh, the family reference was brought up um, possibly more than in any other uh, Fast and Furious movie. As, yeah. much as, as much as Evil Dies Tonight was possibly brought up in Halloween Kills. Well... Uh, you know, they thought it was. They were wrong, by the way. Evil didn't die that night. It did not yeah. die. No. But they are right. In this case, it is family. I will say, if I may touch on the screenwriter a little bit, this fella, Dan, what's his name? Daniel something? Uh, Daniel Sun, did you, what did you say? Daniel something. Daniel no, Casey. Casey. Daniel yeah. Casey. It's like me yeah. and our friend Casey. That's how we'll remember it. <laughs> <laughs> what an asshole he must be. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> Daniel Casey, I do think that it's gotten to a point where, like, remember, did you watch the first Sharknado? No, never saw it. Okay. The first Sharknado, it was just a sci-fi channel original movie, right? Just like any of them. Right, and and they got Ian Ziering and Tara Reid just because they were B movie actors, and that's who appears in those movies, and everyone loved it because yeah. it was just one of those movies. It's like oh, a tornado of sharks. That's hilarious. But then they kept making the Sharknado movies, and so they would put like silly cameos in them. They became self aware, and I do yeah, yeah. I do think. It took the Fast and Furious franchise a long time to get to this point because you had Chris Morgan shepherding it. But I do think that we are now officially at that point. Where You're absolutely right. I, I absolutely agree. And that was a problem, one it, of the problems. It was a me. problem for me. It doesn't ruin the movie for me. But all the stuff, every time they bring up family, which is frequently, too frequently... You know, the stuff with them going into space, which is something that we've joked about in recent years. It's yeah. it's all it's another level of fan service where it's we're no longer listening to our creative muses, Henry. Yeah. We are giving the fans what we think they want. We're trying to create memes is what we're doing. Essentially. I yeah. mean that whole Space sequence is essentially about forty different memes, right there. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And I no, loved every second of it, but um, <laughs> but I see what they're doing. Yeah, I mean, it's not veiled very much. I mean, it's practically spoken, I think, by some of the characters at some points. Um, yeah, you know, I, I, I get. I oh guess yeah, there is that whole thing about Tyrese thinking like perhaps he's invincible, which is like. On the uh, yeah. one hand, self-aware, but on the other hand, too self-aware. It's very self-aware. I mean, that's 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 an audience member in his role saying, nothing ever hurts you guys. You make it through everything. So yeah. he just changed the third person to the first person, and that's... That said, would I change anything? No. Yeah, I wasn't real into this one. Um, 
Having said that, actually, as as we, you were just simultaneously about to say the same time as me, uh, I find Tyrese oddly is my MVP. Roman. Yeah. <laughs> How interesting. Roman. Isn't that? Yeah, I don't know. I, it, was, it was amusing to me. Hey, he uh, was delightful. That scene where he's in that tank that's like sort of hanging over a landmine and he's yeah. guesting. It's good. Yeah, yeah. He, he's he got some good lines and uh, I don't know. He seems to have a sense of humor about himself that I didn't quite detect as much in Tokyo Drift. He's not in Tokyo Drift, you piece of shit. Roman was introduced in Too Fast, Too Furious and brought back in Fast Five and he's been in every movie since. That's what I meant. Too okay. fast, too cute. All right, so, Henry, I've got a couple more People's Choice Awards to read out. Charlie Theron was nominated for the Best Female Movie Star of the Year. <laughs> Paycheck. And she lost to Scarlett Johansson for Black Widow. Fair enough. And John Cena, Vin Diesel, and Charlie Theron all nominated for the Action Star of the Year Award, Henry. Yeah. And they lost to... Mr. Simu Lu for Shang-Chi. Fair enough. Yeah, I agree. I think that's cool. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, whatever. I do think F9 is a better movie than Shang-Chi. Oh, you're fucking. I'm nuts. not joking. I'm not joking. Okay, we yeah, uh, we didn't we didn't agree. I I already kind of knew that. Um, but yeah, this is not was not this. I didn't have a bad time watching this, but it for me. And I'm a little surprised you didn't think this, but I think you're so on board with this franchise that you don't mind. I, I found it to be just a tad on the monotonous side. Like, and it's really long. It's too it's long. real long. Yeah. Like, I couldn't believe 225. it. 225. Whoo! I mean, Out of control. Is... Out of control. Yeah, it's too much. There's like one set piece too many or something. Yeah. Um, all right, let's go through it. I've got two pages of just <laughs> plot notes, all right? God. <laughs> <laughs> it starts on a flashback, Henry. You know, this is something we haven't really gotten in Fast and Furious so much, and I think it adds an interesting color to uh, to this, uh, this particular one. I enjoy the Toretto flashbacks. We start in 1989. We've got Michael Rooker. Working for uh, Dom's dad, all right? And then we get young Dom, and then <gasps> tragedy on the racetrack, Henry. Yeah. Dom's dad's car goes up into flames. Yeah. There's a real Ford and Ferrari thing going on there. Yeah. I saw a <laughs> video on the internet this week of a guy getting hit by a race car, and he just, like, he gets bisected instantly. And goes flying. It was a good what is video. wrong with you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, he, he's not, the guy who got hit is not in a car? He's just... He's like trying to run across the racetrack. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Hey, gang, my. look up that video if you want. That sounds great. Yeah. Uh, I like that Michael Rooker looked younger in the 30 years later. Than he did in 1989. <laughs> yeah, they didn't. They didn't really bother with him. Like they didn't de-age him or anything. He's looked the same since fucking Sea of Love. <laughs> I mean, he kind of has, except for the hair. Yeah, I mean, he's cra He's more craggy looking, but not by that much. Yeah. All right, so uh, we go to the farm. That Dom is now living on a farm. And I wonder about that farm. Is he raising crops? Are there animals? I don't see Dom, like, waking up in the morning and getting on a tractor. No, I, I don't either. I mean, the first thing we see him doing is fixing a car. and you That's know, all he fucking does, this guy. And I'm looking at this thing, and I'm going, <laughs> isn't there work to be done? You're an agrarian now, sir. You're, you're in the country. You need to cultivate crops and Even make Eve, listen, I, and he's not hiring, like, workers because no, he's, no, like, in witness man. protection, basically. Like, a self-imposed right. witness protection. Right. And so, like, 
even even if we're accepting that no work needs to be done on this fucking farm, like, can you find something to do with your life other than tinker with a fucking car? He's got a baby now, named after his living friend, Brian. Um... <laughs> And the kid is, like, four years old, and all Dom wants to do is, like, show him, like, Hey, can you pass me a socket wrench? That's the wrong one, Brian. <laughs> I need the other socket wrench. Like, that's his whole life. And then Letty just, like, comes out with lemonade or something. Brian Jr. always taught you, you need a 6'8", not a 4'5". Shouldn't I be learning how to read, Dad? Reading doesn't help you get through life like no, family. That would never be a line, though. The, all of the kids' lines are just reiterating something that the dad or mom just said to them. It's sort of like, you know... Like a parrot. It's, it's, the, it'll sort of be like Dom saying, like, you know, we can't, we can't really mess with the public, Brian. <laughs> and the son will be like, we can't mess with the public, Dad? Why not? Or like yeah. the son, he he goes like, um, you know, you gotta. My father always told me you gotta believe in God, Brian, or something. And Brian's just yeah. like, "Who's God, Daddy?" It that, right. it sucks. Right. It yeah. fucking sucks. <laughs> All right. The son's best line though is, um, "Daddy, do you know where God is in your that's heart?" A, yeah, that's a great uh, touching scene. Um, you know, that's an example of the writing that really <laughs> threw me off. Chris Morgan ain't writing that line. When that when the kid said that, I'm like, where does where the fuck is that coming from? Like, where does that even fit in any aspect of this movie, the story, the franchise, any so bizarre. I mean, just it God is family on this show. <laughs> Don't talk to me about actual God. <laughs> That's what he should have said to his son. Don't yeah. talk to me about that. Your mother's God. Yeah. Brian is God. Right. Uncle Brian is God. Uncle that... Tej is God. Uncle Roman. Aunt Ramsey. <laughs> All right. Would ask stupid questions. So Ramsey, Luda, Roman show up. Diesel's already ready to fucking shoot them, but they're like, it's just us, <laughs> your friends. Um, and, uh, and, and he, they're like, Hey, we found Cypher, the woman who murdered your baby mama. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, he's not going to go, but then he does. There's a lot of that in, in movies, movies that are too long. You can always cut out the parts where they don't want to do something for like 10 minutes and then they do. Yeah. It, I don't the, need it. The indecision sequence is a famous trope, uh, but they take, I mean, it has no agency when you already know for a certain fact he's going to be along. And about well, they don't days. really have an agency. It's a secret agency run by Mr. <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> yeah. When you already know in about 28 seconds that he's going to appear. And I already knew how he'd appear, too. I mean, you did, too, I'm sure. You in know, he's going to just. Of course, he's just going to turn up and they're all going to look and smile. And it's just so I don't know, man, Th this whole thing just turn. It's so, be I don't know. It needs a fucking revamp of something, you know, maybe back to the basics. Maybe get some of the spy shit out. Just go back to a fucking car race. I'm I mean, with one of the you, best man. one of the best scenes in the movie is the flashback where uh, Dom and uh, Jacob just have a race across. Oh, the yeah. Place. And it's that weird fucking techno hip hop song that's sampling breathe by the prodigy i that's what i you know <laughs> you know that shit because that existed in 1989 what the prodigy no well i'm um, you know it was it was not that no, they were listening to it on the be, radio it was non diegetic no. henry that would be great if it was though. yeah all right, so um, they go to Monte Quinto. Um, yeah. Yes. And, uh, yeah, and that's, that's the part where Roman is over the landmine. They fight a lot of people. They're getting shot at all the time. 
<laughs> there's a lot of gunfights, a lot of machine gun fighting. Yeah. Uh, it, I mean, there's every kind of combat in these movies. And then and John this- Cena shows up at minute 22. You know? Marked it. He marked it. 22. And if you were worried you wouldn't be able to see him, don't worry about it. You can. He's there on screen. Yeah, he gets out of a tiny car for his big body. Yeah. I feel like so much has already happened at that point. Like, this movie's packed. It It's too packed. It's, 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 it is it's it's it is overflowing like a fucking clown car. They should have put that in a movie. No, it's baller. But how about the part, right? <laughs> this part, they get into a big chase, and it's when uh, Roman and Tej, they're going across that suspension bridge, and it's, like, disintegrating <laughs> behind them. Yes. That yes. shit rules, all right? And then Dom swings around that fucking mountain in a car. <laughs> it makes no goddamn sense, but it rules. <laughs> I think that's what's funny about this the series, right? Like, it, it started out, like, kind of believable for the most part. Right, I mean, but that's the fun of the franchise. Sure, sure. Uh, And at at this point, it's but but it could also be like a damaging thing because it at at this point it's grown into something that kind of isn't really a Fast and Furious movie. I think that's okay. I don't. I don't think there needs to be a definition of what a Fast and the Furious movie is. I think that these movies go to the next logical conclusion. And this movie, even though, like, it's trying to, like, give the fans a lot of silly shit, like, space really is the next logical conclusion. Where, like, they're, they're going to make two more Fast and the Furious movies, not counting spinoffs and shit. 10 and 11 are going to be the last two. Justin Lin has already signed on to direct both of them. Mm-hmm. So, like, I mean, if the last movie is, like, Vin Diesel commandeering a warship against some aliens, like, I genuinely will not mind. I will enjoy I'm, that film. I was just going to say, you know it's something has to be underwater. There's, there's no way it can't be underwater. Well, no. we've seen them in a submarine, haven't we? Oh, probably. I don't remember. Yeah, I, I believe so. That. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. All right, so, uh, yeah. Shay Wiggum shows up. Were you excited about that? <laughs> <laughs> no, because all I kept staring at was his nose. But do you remember why? Because he's nope. got... In all of the previous movies, Brian has broken his nose. didn't remember any of that. Yes. These are very hard movies for me to remember plot points of characters of what had happened. That's to why what we should be doing is every time one of these come back, we should binge the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> eight times average three hours per movie eight, 24 hours of fast definitely movie. when the last one comes out I will go back and watch all of them well you'll enjoy that yeah. I certainly will you would do I'm not gonna have to so it won't matter <laughs> what do you mean have to fast five to me is maybe the best action movie that's come out in the last 10 years Mm-hmm. It's ten. It's more than ten years old. So let me just say, I'll say the last fifteen years. Okay. All right. Yeah. So like, what's the, what's the chore of having to rewatch that? That 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 wouldn't be a chore. <laughs> uh, I, I'm just you know I'm not uh, as as hot on this baby as you are. This baby's hot. All right. We got flashback too. All right. That introduces young John Cena. Did you recognize him from Peaky Blinders? Fuck! <laughs> you know, no joke. When he was on screen, I was like, where the fuck do I know this guy from? But the movie was so long that I tried not to pause it too much. And, like, I didn't feel like looking him up to, like, you know. And then I was like, eh. So that's where, of course. Of yeah. Of course. So he I confronts the man that he believes killed his father. Played by Jim Parrick from... 911 Lone Star and also formerly of True Blood. All right. And uh, so they get into a big fight. I love this guy. He's one of my favorite little character actors who pops up places. Jim Parrick. And uh, young Dom comes and helps out. They get into a big fight. And then Dom ends up going to prison, getting a record, protecting Jacob in this fight. I like that Cena was Jacob because it reminded me of Lost. 
Because if Cena is Jacob, that means Dom is the black smoke monster. <laughs> All I, I just was watching the scene going, it's odd that they showed Dom attacking this guy and then keeping the camera off of what he did to him. So I was spending a little bit of the movie wondering if he was in prison for assault or murder. Because they don't tell you until much later, uh, if they even do. I don't I think, think they do. Be. I assume there was it was assault. Wikipedia. Yeah, yeah. Then I read it on Wikipedia. Uh, beat him near death or some shit well, like that. Well, we see him hit him with a tire iron, and we see Michael Rooker jump into action to try to stop it. So I assume that he didn't murder this man in front of Michael Rooker. Yeah, yeah. It was a it was a rough go there. He if did, he did, Rooker would probably have. You know, quieted it up for him. Yeah, you know, put him in the back of another car engine and bisected him on the track. Yeah. So now let's go to a sewer in, in the Caspian Sea. Because um, that's the kind of place we go in these movies now. We are everywhere in the world in this one. <laughs> yeah, this is when Roman thinks he's invincible and they find like a Mr. Nobody hideout and um, Mia shows up. You know, yeah. Dom's sister. Yes, Jordana, Jordana Brewster. Of course, Brian is not there with her because he's retired from this life. Yeah. And it, it, it's, it's he needs little, to take care it, of, of his son at home or whatever. It's kind of eerie. Why is it eerie? I mean, that, I that makes scary. total sense, right? He would let his yeah. wife just no, go off to on this dangerous mission. Oh, I mean... And, and he wouldn't go even though all of his entire extended family of friends is involved no brian's the kind of guy who's gonna stay out of the trouble when it hits but when the party's thrown at the end of the adventure he'll pull up in his car oh he's gotta be at the barbecue baby yeah i mean he's like look they're holding a seat for him yeah i I, (laughs) dude i don't know man i mean the whole thing with that is just (laughs) it is kamikaze man it it is insane it is so fucking weird. I, I don't think of it. And they keep doing it. Uh-huh. I mean, it's just so weird. Like, one time, like, okay. And then just move on. You know on. why, though? I feel like they're building up to hologram Paul Walker. Oh, my God. I feel like God. one of these next two Fast and Furious movies, we're going to try hologram Paul Walker. Like you hologram th- Princess Leia from Rogue One. Yeah, yeah. You think Lin would do that? Justin Lin? Yeah. Yes. Yeah? He'd bring him back like that? I think that Justin Lin... Yeah. I, what, what, I mean, what are we, protecting Paul Walker's legacy? <laughs> He's Paul... No, Lin. No, no. Listen, I know, I know the poor man died, but he was a grown man dating a teenager, and he crashed his car into a tree, all right? If he's not on this earth, that's on him. I'm just curious as to see if they would do that or not. I think that might would. that might bring me back. Yeah. All right. So we set up the rest of the movie. Basically, there's gonna it's a MacGuffin movie. We've got to find the MacGuffin and MacGuffin it out. All right. It's a thing called Project Ares, and um, it involved Han's death, and John Cena is involved somehow. And so what this leads to is let's all split up. Uh, Diesel's gonna go off and and look for John Cena, and uh, Mia and Letty, Letty or Lottie, you know, Michelle Rodriguez, Letty, Letty, Letty. Letty. they're going to go and to Japan and look for Han. All right. right? And then Tej and Roman and Ramses, because we have nothing else for her to do. So she's going to tag along. They're going to go to Germany and find the kid, the what's drift kid from Tokyo Drift, and he's going to... I don't remember yeah. why they go meet him, but that's what's going to happen now. I don't remember why they go meet him either, and I didn't remember why they were meeting him at all during the movie or after. I think it was just to put Lucas Black in the movie, 
and uh, have a call back and then use the rocket that he encounters there. Well, honestly, uh, it was worth it because Lucas Black popping up in this movie. It was we- yeah. It was, I mean, it, I exploded I with bet excitement you in the theater. Yeah, you, you would not believe me in that theater. I wanted to just run down the aisle saying, what's trail?" <laughs> Of course, that's of course all I could think about. Uh, Why would when... you think about anything else? I can't believe you didn't yeah. talk about it. Yeah, what's well, drift? To me, uh, I, if I'm that character, I'd just constantly be bragging. You know, I used to be the drift king. I was once right. the DK <laughs> of Tokyo. So some would be like, "Don't fuck with me." Some would be like, "You were good at football picks, a draft king? What? No, <laughs> no, no. That's no. funny. I do that's think that great. people know what drifting is because of Tokyo Drift, though." I would certainly hope so. I play a lot of know, Grand I... Theft Auto, and people do drift competitions in that game. Sweet. Yeah. Sweet. <laughs> Lucas Black looking uh, very thin and kind and of normal. Let's be honest. Uh, it, it looks like this Lucas Black character um, may be uh, recovering from full-blown AIDS. Not sure. Not sure. I, he looks like he's, um, I mean, when does this take place? Because Tokyo Drift takes place like a few years after it's supposed to. So I think this is really supposed to be like less than 10 years after the events of Tokyo Drift. And I, I the only explanation for how Lucas Black looks is a hard-hitting meth addiction. <laughs> well, that is what I was kind of thinking. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And and I ask this about the real Lucas Black. Sir. I, I think that's what we're talking what about. What is happening, buddy? Your are your teeth crumbling? Why do you look mm-hmm. like this? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Good lord. Yeah. Not not looking the healthiest, but you know. You know these other uh, two characters were also in Tokyo Drift? Apparently they were. That's what I, I had just assumed that. But I, I had yeah. no idea. I had no memory of Lil Bow Wow being in Tokyo Drift. But what? what? Which which sequence, in which sequence is Tokyo Drift? What numbered fast movie is that? Three. That's why I, I thought Roman was in. Cause I, I, but I think it I, takes place between like six and seven or something. Okay, because I I thought Tokyo Drift was the second movie, and no. that's and I knew Roman was in the second movie. That's why I thought he was in that. But of well, I don't he, know why you wouldn't think Too Fast, Too Furious would be the second film in the series. Because I didn't remember there was a movie called Too Fast, Too Furious. How could you let that slip your mind? I I, don't know. I remember that every day. I wake up every day and I'm like, remember Too Fast, Too Furious? That's how you. Oh, that's how you begin the day. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, so, flashback three. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot. Yeah, we get, um, oh, we, you, Leo and Santos, those are those two guys. We get young those guys in this flashback. And then, um, Dom thinks that Jacob killed his dad, and so right. they race. And young Letty counts down the race. I thought it was just some sexy lady, but she was credited as young Letty. I the, didn't know yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's bizarre. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, and they sample the prodigy's breathe, which was very exciting. And Dom says to Cena, to Jacob, you know, if if you win, you could come back home. Yeah. And be part of the family again. Yeah. Even if though I, you killed their dad. Yeah. If I win, you got to just keep driving, never come back. And so... Dom fucking wins. It's the same as all the races in the first movie where somebody uses the NOS too fast. Yes. That's the structure of every single race in the first movie. Yeah, that one was evident to me when that happened. I was like, oh, yep, that's that's how he's going to win. We we know what that means. (laughs) Oh, yeah. And then uh, I thought it was funny that uh, Jacob took him – he took him quite literally and seriously because uh, when he lost, he uh, he literally just kept going. He began his, his yeah. evacuation immediately. No, that's yeah. how it should be. I wanted that's, it to be that way. So he just stays fun. in the car, keeps driving. And I love we get 
a shot of that kid in the car looking very sad that he's and because he took as Michael Rooker says, Henry, the worst thing you can do to a Toretto is take away his family. All right? They talk about that over some Coronas. The beer of choice of the Fast and Furious franchise. Yeah. Have, you can have a beer, Henry, as long as it's a Corona. <laughs> <laughs> is that a line? That's a line from the first movie, yeah. Oh, my God. Um, all right. So, meanwhile, in Tokyo... Lottie and Mia are there, and they find uh, Han. He's just alive. And, you know, it makes no sense. It's just that fans love the character Han, and they regretted killing him a few movies ago. Sure. <laughs> since since uh, they killed Han, diversity has become a very popular item. And it would, it would probably look very good for this franchise to have an Asian male lead. And... They remembered, hey, didn't we kill one of those a couple movies ago? <laughs> <laughs> and for good measure, we're going to throw in. Oh, he's got like a, what is she, like a niece or something? Asian female lead. Yeah. No, I don't think she's a relation. Uh, he, is, She is simply somebody that Han was paid by Mr. Nobody to rip off her parents, and then he took her under her his wing. When... Well, she turns out to be the MacGuffin, right? Because the movie revolves around the weapon system. Right. That you can only access using the right. creator's DNA. But the creators, this girl's parents, have been murdered. So yeah. now this girl is the only one who can... <sighs> All right, so... Um... <laughs> it's a bit reminiscent of, uh, of Magneto in X-Men wanting I'd, to... I'd have maybe made oh. her a kid, and then you could have Han sort of like a Leon the Professional type lone wolf figure. But if they don't, they make her like a, a fucking martial arts expert. Well, they had to make her sexy. Yeah, sword <laughs> woman. Yeah. yeah. She's yeah. Uh, Anna Sawai is this actress. She's a New Zealand um, Asian actress, and... Um, uh, Japanese, and uh, I, I did think that she was very sexy and fun in the movie. I mean, I oh. can't really speak to her acting skills. Nor but, can I. But uh, I thought that she was fine, and if we're gonna have her stick around, then fine. I'm sure she will. Yeah. Well, that's what we do. We we never let any characters leave anymore. You don't cut family out. Once they're in, they're in. Once they're in, they're in. Okay. So uh, Dom goes to see Helen Mirren for no reasons, just to excuse to have Helen Mirren in the movie. Um, and she takes him over to some uh, some guys who take him to see Cena. Um, right. Yeah. Uh, and Cena hands him over to Interpol. Um, you know, well, the, first he also meets the organization, that, uh, not the band. Right. First, he also that would be cool, though, if he turned him over to Interpol. Yeah. Band. If If John Cena was just like. Take him away. And they were like, waste buys, waste blow hands. <laughs> Rosemary, heaven restores you in life. Yeah. <laughs> well, what's going on here? Where are you taking me in a pole? I'll tell you where I'm taking you. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I can't come up with another song. Damn and it. And they also introduced. I'm taking you uh, to. New York care. Yeah, all right. They also <laughs> they also introduce us and uh, Dominic uh, to Otto, the quasi. What's East this character doing Europe? in this movie? I do not know. <laughs> why do we need another villain? You know why? It's because every villain in the Fast and the Furious movie turns face at the end, and that's why Shaw's now a hero, and that's why uh, you know all of them. So well, they had, they had some. They, I guess, they figured if they wanted Cipher to ultimately pull the strings towards the end, she needed a foil who could who could die if Cena was going to do a heel turn for the good. You know, when is Cipher going to become part of the family? You know that's going to happen. That'd be great. That'd it's going to hundred percent happen. Yeah, I was wrong about you. I think that I could be part of your family as long as I continue to hide my South African accent. <laughs> she's done a pretty good job over the years of trying to shed that thing. I mean, she's a good actor. It's just like oh, yeah. all she's got in this movie is a haircut. 
It's a bad haircut. Too. Yeah. Woo. It's rough. All right, so it turns out the Interpol agents are not really Interpol agents, and one of them's Cardi B. So that's exciting. And turns out she's the worst actor in the world. Oh my god, that was that that those were line deliveries. I mean, that was how many takes? What what takes weren't good enough to be in the movie? Justin Lin probably just like he he probably just did one take. And then ADR'd it afterwards. He was like, I'm not going to spend. This was not ADR'd. I've got news for you. Yeah. I caught uh, a couple ADR'd lines, and this was not. Oh, uh, did you? The, this, the scene in the van between Vin Diesel and Cardi B reminded me a lot of the scene between De Niro and Pacino in Heat. Yeah. It reminded me of the scene between um, uh, Gary Busey and um, Stephen Baldwin in Slapshot 2. <laughs> I remember the scene that's in the office, right? When they're in the office together. I think it goes out into a hallway at some point yeah, as well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. In Edinburgh, they're in pursuit of Jacob. Uh, Cypher reveals she doesn't know how to drive, which I immediately related to because I don't either. Um, Ramsey, not Cypher. No. Oh, right. Sorry. They're the same thing. They're just like hot computer <laughs> ladies. Um, <laughs> Cypher is Charlie Theron, though, and Ramsey is uh, Game of Thrones lady, right? Oh, is she Game of Thrones? I think that's what people know her from. Can't escape that show. Well, you can. I did. I did too, but I mean, every time there's somebody in a movie and I look them up, it's like they were also in Game of Thrones. Not that's anymore. I feel like that's died down a little bit. Uh, I feel like now all the Game of Thrones people have failed at being movie stars and they're trying to like get their own television shows, you know? So like there were like 50 regular characters on Game of Thrones, so now there's going to be like 50 different shows with like a <laughs> Game of Thrones character. That's what happened after fucking Lost. You turn on a show and it'd be like, Oh, I guess Sun is starring in this. <laughs> uh, all right. this, this week on ABC's Sawyer. Well, no, it wasn't Sawyer, but it was like a di I watched a, sh a couple episodes of a show called Intelligence that was just like starring the dude who played Sawyer. I just made that up. I had no idea he was in a show. Of course that. he was. Uh, so Han went to Tokyo after Giselle passed at the end of Fast and Furious 6, Henry. As one does. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Nobody found him there. Mr. Nobody, of course, knew Giselle. Um, by the way, I think this is all setting it up as a possibility for Giselle to turn out to be alive, too. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. <laughs> great stuff. Um, he rescued this little girl, L. And she grows up to be a sexy lady. And he's got to save her. And um, and and then he explodes a guy. That was pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got to talk. I'm sure you're getting to. What? I'm sure you're getting to. But, you know. So the big secret weapon in this movie is a magnet. Which we oh, turn yeah. on. At will. And it just, let me tell you, brother, if you're ever driving down the street and you need to clear a pathway, you need to get somewhere in a hurry, you're late for work, get yourself one of these babies and you'll just knock cafe tables, cars, anything magnetic. Did you not think this was baller? Like most things in the movie, I thought it was a cool device in, actually in the fight scenes. I thought it was very inventive, how the guns keep getting taken away. But once they're using the car, it's just overdone. It's just a I thousand I love it. Oh, that chase where they're driving around that magnet car and then Cena shows up and like like Han Solo in the fucking trench and, and just Ooh. like flips over that uh, that enormous tanker thing. That shit ruled, bro. You know, right. So Cena turns face here because he gets turned on. That's why we had to have that guy Otto. So, like, there, in that earlier scene with Interpol, Dom has a very important line, Henry, where he says to Cena, Hey, John Cena, uh, <laughs> um, 
Listen, I see a lot of you got a lot of guys working for you, but are they loyal? You know, do they have your back? I don't think so. And ultimately, he's right. These guys turn yeah. on Cena. Otto teams up with Cipher, and you know what? This to me is just about the most tragic version of a character in the Fast and the Furious franchise I can think of. Because think about this Jacob character, John Cena. Yeah. He gets run out of town by his brother. Yeah. Family yeah. is very important to him because he's a Toretto, as we know. Right. Okay. Yes. So yeah. he, Jacob goes off and surrounds himself with an army, an, a yeah. militia of, yeah. of a militia. people. Okay. And but no matter how many people he surrounds himself with, Henry, he'll just he can't build himself a family again. He's alone. He's alone. He's, and, 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 you know, he's run out of town, as we find out later, that, you know, he didn't intentionally. I mean, he was just trying to uh, fix the race for his pop so he's, he would lose and throw the throw the race. Absolutely. To him. He didn't mean for him to die by, no. you know, cutting a hairline fracture in the fuel line. And, yeah. and Dom is the most forgiving brother, the most forgiving man in the world. He's willing. Cena comes back in with that car and John and, and Dom is just like, yeah. That's it. That's all you needed to do. You're part of the family again. Come to the right. barbecue. Right. You know, just don't do the five knuckle shuffle on me or whatever. And <laughs> so Is that his move? He's got many moves, but that's one of them. Do you want to hear some more? Sure. He's got one, the F U. <laughs> and then he's got another one, the S T F U. Okay. Alright. He's got that's all I can remember now. What's the five knuckle shuffle? Oh, the five knuckle shuffle. He so he he does this. It, he um he jumps over you twice, and then he 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 ju- dusts some dirt off his shoulder, and then yeah. he goes like this. You can't see me, and then he gets his five knuckles like this, and then yeah. he just drops him down on your face. Okay, so it's a punch. It's but he punches you in the face. But before that, there's a, like a little dance he does, and that's the five knuckle shuffle. Three, four, one, two, three, four. We we generally only are born with four knuckles, but I guess he's including. What the fuck are you talking about? Yeah, the thumb is a knuckle all its own. Okay. All right, Henry. I'm looking. So right. so Cipher gets away. She's sort of like Doctor Claw in this franchise at this point. Like the end of an episode of Inspector Gadget. Like her. Gadget. Oh my god, that was terrifying. Good, yeah, I've always been able to do Dr. Claw. How, how did you wait until now to bust that out? <laughs> Last appearance. I don't know if we ever brought up Inspector Gadget. Maybe you gotta come back when we cover Inspector Gadget with Matthew Broderick. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so meanwhile, during all of this, Tej and Roman are in space. And um, in, they're, like, driving a car in space, and then they see, like, the space station. And in my least favorite moment in the movie, they're wearing yellow spacesuits, and one of the Russian guys on the space station goes, Oh, they look like minions. That and was I'm a like, nice And I'm like, hey, too. hey, Universal Studios, fuck off. You fuck off out of this movie. Just let me watch this franchise. I don't want to hear about your other fucking franchises. Yeah, the Star Wars reference felt a little bit more organic. Yeah, because this isn't Disney. Right. That was an actual reference that was in the script. It, yeah. This and was literally Universal fun. saying, hey, you right. think you can mention the Minions? Yeah. <laughs> All right, so there's a barbecue at the end, of course. They, uh, the Drift Boys are there. Han's there. Brian rolls up at the end. And uh, and that's the end of the movie. And then we get a big stinger. Did you watch the stinger? Yeah. And it's Shaw beating up a guy in a punching bag. And yeah. so then creative. Yeah. And then Han shows up, and of course Shaw murdered Han. So that's very surprising for ha- Shaw to see Han show up at his door. But now, what will that mean? Because Han was in on that whole thing, so he knows that Shaw. Like, how's he view Shaw? Well, is he I, showing up for revenge, or I, what is he showing up for? I think it's a complicated question, Henry, that we'll revisit in fi- Fast 10. So you don't know. Fast 10, your seatbelts for Fast 10. 
<laughs> it has a release date already of yeah. May 19th, 2023. Okay. That's no, next year. Getting... I'll fucking be there. Fucking A, you will. Yeah. All right, what do you give it? Two. That's bullshit. It's better than that. I will say that I, when I saw it, oh, I gave it a four, and I am going to drop my grade to a three. Oh. Yeah. I, I don't. Because it's just not on the level of five, which I gave a five, yeah. and then six, seven, which I gave a four. Yeah. I think F9 is the fourth best Fast and the Furious movie. Maybe fifth best. Because I'm a fan yeah. of the fourth one. Nobody else likes that one. I don't remember what I thought of it. Um. The uh, yeah, I, I I wanted to go three, but it's just too laborious, and I and I and I and there's just it's too much of the same thing over and over and over. And I think if it was a shorter movie, it would have made a huge difference, even despite the silliness and the dialogue not being up to Chris Morgan standards. I was thankful I, just, for it being it just, long because it had been so long since since I'd seen a movie. Like I was excited for this movie. I understand that. I understand that. Um, but yeah, I, I, I have to go too. Sorry. Okay, that's okay. Who's your MVP of this feature film? That, that is uh, Roman. Tyrese getting the MVP. John uh, Cena was a close second. I liked him in this. Yeah, you know, I actually could. That's who I'm considering. I, I like Cena a lot. As the brother. And to me, the flashbacks really worked. I mean, it's odd that John Cena is cast as the brother. And then, like, all his major emotional scenes are not John Cena playing them. That's very true. Maybe it's not odd. Maybe it's... <laughs> Maybe they thought that through, yeah. Uh, yeah. Hey, yeah. how dare you? I have seen John Cena deliver some very emotional promos in that ring, okay? I believe you. All right? Hey, I believe you. Listen, when he was running the new Nexus, those are those are some tough times for John Cena. Not a, not a good place for him to be. Man. Yeah. All right. So, uh, so I will go with him for my MVP. And my LVP, I got to say, all right. First, I hate Kurt Russell in these movies, but he's like barely in it. So I'm not going to go with him. I, I'm pretty sick of Cypher. I'm going to go with Charlie Theron as my LVP. Interesting. Yeah. You're sick of Cypher. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go with what I think is the, uh, there's a couple of not very good performances in this movie. Um, I disagree. But, yeah, I figured. Uh, but I think he's at a lowest low here. Uh, and, uh, that is the LVP of this film and the least entertaining person in it is Vin Diesel. I love that Henry's like the acting isn't up to snuff in these films. MVP Tyrese. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, Vin Diesel most... LVP is just disgusting. Like it's, I, I understand the impulse. Terrible. He's an insufferable human being, but no, it's not why. He's just, a, just he, he can't. He's just. You do not make Dom Toretto the LVP of a Fast and the Furious movie. That's like a, a bullshit hot take that you want to be given on your last show. I really didn't think about that at all, as you already know. <laughs> I just don't like him in this movie. He, uh, he he escapes that from that God is in your heart sequence alone. All right. What do you mean he escapes from it alone? Yeah, I, that sequence is good enough that it should take him out of the running. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. Yeah. Not good. I'm good. And the part where he goes, you put that foot to that floor and you pray. <laughs> 